Thank you very much, everyone. Let's get started. Distinguished members of the United States Department of State Secretary's Office of Global Women's Issues, U.S. Embassy in Dili, representatives of government, civil society, and the private sector in Timor-Leste, and internationally, ABA Rowley and Grameen colleagues and local partners. Thank you so much for joining us for this knowledge sharing event today on wage launch of its assessment of opportunities, barriers, and a path forward for women entrepreneurs in Timor-Leste. We are very grateful to be joined by Forrest Boyles from the U.S. Embassy in Dili. Forrest and his wife arrived in the U.S. Embassy in November 2020, where he serves as political, economic, and counselor officer, previously, who previously served in the Department of State in Mumbai and Nairobi, though calls Arkansas his home whenever he gets a chance to go back to the States. He has his master's in international relations and a graduate certificate in sustainable resource management. Boris, thank you so much for joining us and we welcome your opening remarks. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. All right, I'm very yeah. sorry. But... Okay, thank you for, uh, for confirming that. I'm very sorry, it seems like my video cannot be shared. Um, having a little bit of technical issue here in uh, Delhi at the moment. So let me just start by briefly saying good morning to everyone and my respects obviously to the Secretary of State for Equality and Inclusion, the Regional Director for Latin America and Asia at the Grameen Foundation, the CEO of the Alola Foundation, the Executive Director of Bakhtuturu, the Wage Director of the American Bar Association Rule of Law Initiative, and all other guests and participants. It is my great honor to represent the U.S. Embassy Delhi at today's event. The Embassy is very pleased the U.S. Secretary of State's Office of Global Women's Issues is funding the Wage Best Initiative and that the Grand Mean Foundation is implementing in collaboration with the American Bar Association's Rule of Law Initiative. This reflects the commitment the United States has made to advancing the role of women, not just in the United States, but around the world, including here in Timor-Leste. We at the U.S. Embassy in Delhi are proud of the partnerships we have developed with the government and civil society to increase opportunities for Timorese women. For example, our USAID admission has made the promotion of these women entrepreneurs a core focus in their new five-year country development cooperation strategy which strives for an inclusive, prosperous, healthy, and more self-reliant Timor-Leste. Several USAID projects support women entrepreneurs by providing training in business management, financial literacy, household financial management, and budgeting. USAID's Tourism for All project, for instance, encourages women to engage in Timor-Leste's burgeoning tourism sector as entrepreneurs, artisans, and skilled workers. Also, through our Ambassador Small Grant Fund, we have funded NGOs who have been dedicated to supporting women's economic empowerment. Many focus their activities in rural areas by providing training on business management, financial literacy, and establishing women's business groups. I will mention that we were very pleased to have previously partnered with Bok Futuro and the Alola Foundation in these very good efforts. Lastly, our public affairs, our public affairs section regularly works with young women and entrepreneurs to ensure they have opportunities to improve their skills and connect to networks of support. We are especially proud of the young women who have participated in the Women's Leadership Initiative, which is part of the Young Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative, or YSEALI for short. YSEALI's Women's Leadership Academy aims to build on the successes of young women leaders in Timor-Leste by empowering them to take leadership roles in their communities and build their careers. Empowering women is directly correlated with economic prosperity and with improvements in a society's security and stability at every level. Giving women education and employment opportunities is good for the whole nation. Nevertheless, we know barriers and challenges exist for Timorese women. We look forward to learning more about wage best findings to consider what role the embassy could have to help remove these barriers and create opportunities for greater economic and financial inclusion of women in Timor-Leste. On behalf of the American people and the U.S. Embassy in Dili, we commend the good work you have done and will continue to do an improvement, not just of the lives of Timorese women, but their families, their communities, and their nation. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, Forrest. We really appreciate your remarks and thank you to the U.S. Embassy for joining us and for supporting us. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. My name is Amelia Kuklovitz. I'm Regional Director for Latin America and Asia at the Green Foundation. Next slide, please. If I could tell you a little bit about um, the WAGE initiative. The ABA Roley led WAGE program is a global consortium launched in 2017 and is funded by the Secretary's Office of Global Women's Issues at the US Department of State. We work to strengthen the capacity of civil society in target countries to effectively advance the status of women and girls so, and support women and girls economic empowerment advance the women, peace and security agenda and respond to gender-based violence. As you can see, we're very focused on a holistic approach and our partners seen here, ABA Roley, Search for Common Ground, SIPE and Grameen are committed to, firm, to promoting women's economic empowerment and around the globe. Next slide, please. If I could tell you a little bit more about Grameen Foundation, um, based on our inspiration from our founder, Mohammed Yunus, Green Foundation is committed to empowering women as, to create a world without poverty and hunger. Our signature programs are focused around digital financial services, digital innovation and in agriculture, and community agents. As you can see, women are at the center. We're very focused on human-centered design, leveraging partnerships, using technology in a smart people focused way and very focused on sustainable agriculture and financial inclusion. Next slide. To tell you a little bit about Wage Best, our project in Timor Leste, which stands for the business and support, social support for female entrepreneurs in Timor Leste. Wage recognizes that women's entrepreneurship faces multiple challenges social, economic, regulatory, to start, maintain, and grow their businesses. Wage Best is focused on linking both microfinance institutions to women's economic empowerment CSOs to join forces and better support women business, women business owners with their various needs, including access to credit and social support so they can be more successful. We're very excited to tell you more about our project and our initiative. If I could have the next slide. And to do this, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Januario Suarez, who will be moderating our, our, the rest of the panel and is also supporting us directly in Timor Leste as a te technical expert. Pass off to you, Januario. Hi, Mana Mele, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to, you to all of you. My name is Rio, and I'm a very best coordinator for Timor Leste, who will be the moderator for the remaining time of this webinar. Uh, before we pass to the other speaker, let's have now our uh, photo session. Uh, for those that are already uh, on board, please uh, kindly on your camera so we can have the pictures together before we go to the uh, next speaker. Thank you so much. Uh, just wanted to confirm that um, the photo is being taken on Pentia from your end. Um, Princia, can we ask if the photo is being taken? Yes, it's being taken. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Hello, Mona. Do you hear me? Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, we can yes, hear you. Can hear you. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, can we ask Prince if it's uh or if we're done taking the photo? Yeah, all the pics have been taken. Okay. Go ahead, Rio. So, Mana, I just close my one because me and Mana Mako, so we are very close. So we use one on camera only. Uh, okay, thank you, Maun Jose. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, thank you so much for the uh, for the pictures. Our next speaker today is still from Ghana Foundation representative, Mana Christine, Mana Beth, and Mana Kim for result of the rapid barrier assessment report. We have time for Mana when you have time. Oh. Thank you, Rio. Uh, can everybody hear me well? Yes, Bev. Yes. Can hear you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. I am Beverly Jewel. I'm the Senior Specialist for Monitoring and Evaluation of Grameen Foundation. I've had the privilege of visiting Timor-Leste last year, just before the pandemic started, which was also the time when we started this research. To start, I'd like to talk a little about the framework and the methodology that was used for the study. Next slide, please. For this barrier assessment, we made use of wages overall global women's economic empowerment framework, which considers factors such as structural, relational, material, personal, cognitive, and perceptive opportunities and barriers to women's empowerment. We will go through each of these findings in the following slides. For the methodology, Qualitative data gathering methods such as focus group discussions and key informant interviews were used. Respondents for both the FGDs and the interviews were chosen purposively among women entrepreneur beneficiaries and clients of wage best partner CSOs and MFIs along with their husbands. A total of nine FGDs were conducted in the municipalities of Dili, Bobonaro, and Covalima in order to identify key opportunities and barriers faced by women entrepreneurs in relation to starting, maintaining, and expanding successful businesses. A total of 94 individuals participated in the discussions. Next slide, please. So now we will uh, start off with uh, the opportunities and assets of uh, the study. So for structural opportunities, among them is that the legal and policy framework of Timor-Leste is highly gender responsive. Equality among men and women is enshrined in the constitution of Timor-Leste. Men and women have the same rights and duties in all areas of family, political, economic, social, and cultural life. The constitution also states that an effective equality of opportunities among men and women is one of the 10 fundamental objectives of the state. In 2001, the Women and Constitution Working Group developed and submitted the Women's Charter of Rights to the Constituent Assembly. This was instrumental in centralizing gender issues in the country's policy debate thus increasing women's political participation and raising public awareness of the democratic value of gender equality. The Timor-Leste government also produced progressive policy documents, including the 2014 to 2017 Gender and Private Sector Strategy, which was extremely detailed and forward-thinking. However, implementation of the policies continued to be a limitation and these will be further discussed under the barriers. Among relational opportunities, supportive uh, family re relationships despite traditional patriarchal household power dynamics and unequal household workloads, a majority of uh, married women stated that their husbands are supportive and allows them to participate in activities such as training and other livelihood opportunities. Participants also shared that they receive support from their husbands and other family members uh, in terms of doing household chores, childcare, and if necessary, looking after their businesses if ever they are interested in participating in training and other personal development activities. 
under material opportunities or micro grants, as well as savings and loan models that are available to women's groups. Women entrepreneur groups are often recipients of micro grants from local government and nonprofit organizations to start a variety of small businesses. Credit are also accessed through savings and loan groups formed under such grants. Participants felt that these three financial products, along with trainings, are instrumental in starting or adding capital to women's businesses. Under personal opportunities is the strong presence of women's groups. Women entrepreneurs often band together to form groups. Respondents reported that such groups serve as important source of social support and provides financing and training for members to start or maintain their businesses. Under cognitive opportunities are the women's technical skills. Women participants' pre-existing skills, including those of that uh, passed on through family traditions, such as weaving ties, the craft eventually becomes a prominent income-generating activity. And under perceptive opportunities are the motivation and confidence of women to start and grow their businesses. The women participants are highly motivated to start or grow their businesses. They also feel confident in their ability to start businesses if they have pre-existing leadership and business skills gained from practical experience. Their confident group uh, their confidence grew with time as they gained experience and learned by doing. We will now uh, go into the key barriers uh, that uh, were findings of this study. So under the structural barriers, among them is the contradictory legal and justice framework. Timor-Leste has a mixed legal and justice system combining both formal and customary laws and formal and informal justice institutions. While the Constitution guarantees equal rights for men and women, it also requires the state and norms that are not contrary to the Constitution and any legislation dealing specifically with customary law. These customary laws and justice institutions often embrace sexist and uh, norms and practices, including discrimination against women with respect to property rights, resulting in confusion and often stripping away of women's rights and practice. Related to that, there are also policy gaps and silences in such a way that legal guarantees are not ensured, particularly in rural areas where budgetary constraints and the lack of rules and regulations facilitating implementation of national laws and policies by local government limits the execution of these policies. Another barrier is the challenge to business formalization. Most respondents stated that the existing business registration procedures and requirements are not adapted to the capabilities and realities of micro, small, and medium enterprise owners, making it difficult for women entrepreneurs to benefit from the advantages of business formalization. The participants noted that they lack documents needed to register a business, that requirements are generally too cumbersome and difficult to comply with, and they rarely receive assistance in completing these registration requirements. Another is insecurity and crime. Respondents from various groups identified two key threats that they encounter in their daily lives which have adverse effects on their business activities. Communal conflicts and insecurity in public spaces due to gang violence and domestic violence. Next slide, please. Going into relational barriers, prevalent social cultural norms, position men as household heads, decision makers, and breadwinners operating in the formal economy, while women are seen as caretakers responsible for a multitude of household tasks, required to obey their husbands, and generally working in the informal economy. Women's caretaking role limits the amount of time they have available to participate in income-generating activities. At the same time, 
their subservient gender roles limit women's agency and decision making over household finances, specifically the use of these finances to support women's business investments. Another relational barrier is the social expectation for economic support. Uh, practices which have significant negative impact on women's take-home income are uh, some of the traditional ceremonies and celebrations that pressure families to contribute. Women tend to channel their business income to these community events instead of being saved or channeled back into business maintenance and growth. Lastly, under relational uh, barrier is gender-based violence most common in the forms of domestic, physical, or sexual violence. It is reported to be a bigger threat to women's daily lives and economic activities, with more than half of the adult female population having experienced gender-based violence. According to the participants, economic and societal pressures such as dire financial needs, lack of employment opportunities, and low awareness and education on gender-based violence prompts men to lash out on their women partners. Gender-based violence is commonly considered as an internal family issue, which deters women from seeking immediate legal remedy as indicated in the law. The respondents share that there is a traditional and more common observed way of addressing domestic violence in their communities. I would now turn you over to Kim to discuss material, personal, cognitive, and perceptive barriers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bev. Uh, hello, good morning, and good evening to all. My name is Kim Panunchalman, and I'm currently the program manager for Wage Best Timor Leste. Um, and I'll continue on with the barriers faced by women entrepreneurs in Timor Leste. Um, under material barriers, first would be women's limited access to productive resources. In Timor-Leste, it is estimated that only 20% of land is owned by women. A legal basis for determining land ownership is still lacking. And most Timorese, particularly in the rural areas, follow customary and informal systems for land access. Such customary land right practices declare land as owned by the community, and rights to use are allocated to individuals and pass along family lines. It is common practice to pass land on to male family members, wherein women are only able to access land through marriage. These practices severely undermine women's land rights. This then is related to the second material barrier, as the lack of land ownership limits women's access to financial services, especially credit. Land certificates are commonly submitted as collateral to apply for loans to banks. And FGD participants cited that this poses a common limitation and difficulty for women. Such women micro-entrepreneurs with no collateral to offer are able to access credit from microfinance institutions such as Skybau, as land certificates or other assets commonly used to guarantee loans are not required by these MFIs. Despite this, women perceive the need to ob obtain permission from men and express the need for men or any family member to assist them in opening financial accounts. Lastly, under material barriers is women's lack of access to proper market facilities to sell their products, as reported by women Thais producers in Delhi. The me members of the Bobo Meta group shared that they sell their products at home, which is far from the main road and not commonly reached by customers. They further shared that it remains difficult to seek and rent strategic commercial spaces, to sell their products because of their low profit margins. Um, and those are the three material barriers faced by on women entrepreneurs. Um, moving on to the next slide, please. Under personal barriers is time poverty. As discussed under relational barriers, women's heavy household workloads, which are dictated by traditional gender roles, limit the number of hours a day that women can devote to their business operation and skills development. Women can also be exposed to pro productivity and health issues given the unpaid and paid working hours that leave them exhausted and affecting their ability to make smart business decisions. Related to this issue on time poverty is women's limited mobility as they cannot work far from their houses if they have to take care of all the other household chores or are expected to manage household chores prior to any other activity, including tending to their businesses. Moving on to the next slide, please. 
Uh, cognitive barriers mainly revolve around women's education and skill level. In Timor, women have lower educational attainment and lower literacy rates than men. The overall literacy rate for Timorese females is 64% compared to men at 71%. Prevailing customs and the common belief that men generally are the breadwinners of the family, further magnified by economic constraints, drive Timorese family to invest more in male children by sending them for tertiary education. The enrollment rate from secondary to tertiary education dropped significantly for women from 67% to 14.8% as compared to 59% to 21% for men. Women's lower educational attainment and inability to qualify for high-skilled jobs is one reason why they comprise less than one-third of overall wage workers across all sectors. On the point of limited financial literacy, the majority of women participants stated that limited access to financing stems from a lack of sufficient information about available credit options and other financial services providers. With the limited information that they have, women participants share that the process to access credit is complicated and can be time consuming, with the criteria and document requirements cumbersome. Additionally, some participants perceive that loan, available loan products have high interest rates and varying repayment schedules, which can be discouraging for them. Participants across all focus group discussions stated that they require more formal business training and mentoring to mitigate business risks and the challenges that they face. Such business risks include low profit margins, over indebtedness, market oversaturation, and the threat of business interruption. They said that they are keen to learn about financial literacy, cash flow management, market assessment, business planning, customer service, marketing, and sales, as well as skills and knowledge to prepare for unexpected circumstances. Um, moving on to the next slide, please. Lastly, under perceptive barriers are beliefs about women's businesses and about men's roles in this. Perceptions influenced by social norms classify some businesses as gendered endeavors. In particular, a large number of male participants share that weaving and sewing are primarily women's businesses and that men are generally expected to spend their time gardening, looking after domestic animals, and on occasion, help women in looking after their children at home. This greatly limits the sectors of women's businesses in Timor-Leste. Influenced by the predominantly patriarchal society, women have a heavily ingrained perception and have deeply internalized the social cultural mindset that men are the ones responsible for major family decisions. Specifically, women participants share that the role of married women is to support and listen to their husbands and mentioned the need to obtain permission from their husbands before ultimately pursuing any form of economic activity. Although both men and women participants see a positive change in gender norms and recognize that both genders have the same rights to perform economic activities and work outside home, predetermined gender roles and the relational barriers mentioned above still deter women from starting a business. In cases where women are able to start businesses, Prevailing barriers limit their working hours for the enterprise, their ability to make better business decisions, and their access to capital. They also still face risks of gender-based violence in their daily lives. Faced with these barriers, women entrepreneurs remain operating at micro and small levels with low profit margins. Um, and that would be all from my end for the barriers faced by women entrepreneurs in Timor Leste. I now turn over to Christine for the program recommendations and activities under WageFest. Thank you, Kim. Good morning and good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Violago. I'm the country manager for the Philippine office. So I'm currently based in Manila, but supporting this wage program. Part of our assessment was to identify also strategic locations where our women entrepreneurs can access various information and in both financial services as well as social support. That means identifying key locations where there can be made linkages 
between microfinance institutions as well as civil society organizations. In identifying these locations, we looked at certain criteria. The first one is looking at the poverty rate of the different municipalities and high incidences of gender-based violence. Second, we wanted to make sure that in these areas, there are already existing programs or the organizations present have past experience in addressing the needs of these women. Second, it would help that there is an existing manpower team and physical office wherein people can actually go and visit and interact with the different officers as well as key uh, um, services that they can avail. So if you look at here strategically, we also identified locations that are relatively close to each other meaning, for example, in Lekisa from Delhi, about 1.5 to 2 hours in travel, which means that these locations would have um, branch offices between the different organizations that we've identified. Next slide, please. So now we turn over to the key recommendations that this assessment um, is able to present. We understand now that the vast majority of medium and small entrepreneurs in Timor-Leste respond to immediate household economic needs rather than preparation of a long-term business plan. Many of these entrepreneurs are typically sustained by practical experience rather than skill, rendering many women who are operating in these um, low-income households and low uh, businesses to the informal economy. So what we want is actually a holistic approach and a tailored package of financial, business, and social services so that they are able to empower themselves and address these different challenges. The first one is in social business support to women entrepreneurs. This means having a participatory gender training and information dissemination, both at the household and community level. We wanted to identify, address inequalities between men and women in the household and in addressing also their gender uh, gender um responsibilities, both between child rearing as well as taking care of their business. We wanted to raise community awareness of gender-based values prevention, including the nature and consequences of the different forms of violence. The third point is increased community knowledge about these benefits of women's socioeconomic participation. We want to offer women the referral pathways for essential support services, including so psychosocial, medical, and legal services. Throughout these leadership publications and discussions, raising awareness is important so that they are able to see how their value in playing in economic needs and aligning themselves in different axes of um, services that are located in the area. Training needs expressed by women entrepreneurs includes financial literacy and entrepreneurship training across the business cycle. Specifically for women entrepreneurs, they need support in enterprise selection, planning, record keeping, and even inventory management. This may sound simple, but for a basic entrepreneur, these skills are needed and be reminded so that they can sustain their business. There should also be a technical skills training. This can be sector specific, for example, such as weaving and food production to improve the quality and diversification of their product offerings. In capacity building support between we CSOs or microfinance institutions, there needs a continuous support regularly to update their training curriculum and approve approaches in their deliveries of training. This should be simplified enough and sometimes um, information should be readily accessed by women, both in different types of platform, such as radio, SMS, and even flyers, so that these actionable messages can be um, taken and uh, digested well by these women. Next slide, please. What has been done so far? As Grameen Foundation, Part of our assessment meaning, means introducing our di different programs to the key MFIs, as well as civil society organizations, and understanding and creating this um, barriers assessment and making sure that this is communicated between the organizations. We also tried to pilot test a loan discipline and business training together with a CSO and an MFI 
um, back in October um, to see also the responsiveness of these women to the different, soft, different services offered. And last December, we're happy that we were able to uh, conduct a gender empowered dynamics workshops between the microfinance institutions and civil society partners um, that will be uh, part of this wage engagement. And some of them are actually here today to speak about um, their plans on the linkage sessions and their plans moving forward throughout this wage engagement. In October to 20, 2020 to March 2021, the main activity now between these organizations is to create a linkage plan so that they can strategically identify the women targets as well as address um, point by point the um, barriers that um, were identified by the assessment and plan accordingly so that we can increase our reach and um, increase awareness about the different issues um, that women are facing and women entrepreneurs are facing in both the household and community level. Now I pass on the platform to Rio as she introduces the next panel of speakers. Thank you, Mana, Bev, Mana Kim, and my host team for walking us through the possible and highlighting asset and opportunity to find out the barriers regarding to the women and their business plan in Timor-Leste. Also, the recommendation from Grammar Foundation side during identification from the assessment methods, structural barrier, relational barrier, material barrier, personal barrier, cognitive barrier, and perspective barrier. Thanks again, Mana Christine, Mana Bev, and Mana Kim for sharing more at Ramin's work in Timor. Again, if you have a question, please comment in the chat box and we'll try to address during the Q&A portion. Our next speaker will be Mana Maria Gutierrez, a CEO from Alola Foundation, will share from their product and service, also experience the current needs and gap or of women groups they serve. She will share for us today the experience about the implementation of wage best from Grumman Foundation to Alola as a GSO partner. Mana Maria, when you read. Good morning, all. Thank you, Grumman Foundation, for inviting us to be as a speaker on this event. I'm Maria Guterres, I'm, I'm talking from Alola Foundation from Timor Leste. It's my pleasure uh, to present sorry, to you. Uh, my name is Maku. I think it's a bit choppy. I think it's a bit choppy. Uh, we can't hear so well your audio. Did you hear me? Hello? Uh, yes. We can hear. Hello? Uh, we can hear you. It's just Hello? a bit off your okay. voice. Um, good morning, all. I'm Maria Guterres from Alola Foundation, Timor Leste. It's my pleasure to present to you on our experience as a CSO. Project supported by Grammin Foundation. So thank you for Grammin Foundation for inviting us as the speaker. First of all, I would like to acknowledge the president of uh, Leste and representative from US Embassy of Timor Leste. Well, I'd like to introduce the Alola Foundation. What are we do and what's our mission? Alola Foundation is a non-profit organization that works to improve the life of women and children in Timor Leste. Alola Foundation was established by former First Lady Kirsty Ford Guzmao in 2001, with one of the mission is to promote women's rights and increase women's leadership capacity through education, maternal and child health, economic and empowerment program. The best project in Timor Leste, it was from Gami Foundation. The areas to economic empowerment program uh, works are handicraft development and livelihood. The goal of this program is to strengthen women's economic participation in order to improve the status of women, to increase income generation opportunities, and to promote economic independence. 
So what do we, uh, what are the products and services we offer to our beneficiaries so far? Well, through our economic empowerment, through our economic empowerment program, we would like to report that so far 65 handicraft women collectives gain access to market through our low life grants, Easter and Christmas fair, as well as at participate at national events. Two collective members participate in the international market, which is in Santa Fe, United States, 2013-2017, and also participate in Women of the World um, in 2016 in Australia. In addition, we also have trained 55 vulnerable women's groups, including women with active experience in GBV, on business skill and financial literacy, gender-based violence, small-scale agriculture, and chicken rare skills across 13 municipalities. The other activity that we've been uh, offered to the group is also we have trained 12 women collectives on product quality, quality improvement, diversification of the train, uh, training, diversification, uh, and provision of saving equipment. So after the training, we also handed saving equipment to the uh, beneficiaries. In, in addition, we also provide a small incentive to uh, beneficiaries and then our target groups for about 500 to 1,500 US dollars to 56 vulnerable women groups for saving and loans activity. Next slide. So here you can see the picture, some of the activity that we did through our economic empowerment program, which is product development training at Alola Esperanza, our production center here in Dili. And the other picture is of, it's about pro providing agricultural product training on how to grow a green vegetable to our target groups and beneficiaries out in municipalities. Next slide, please. So our Women Economic Empowerment Program priorities for the year of 2021 are including develop recycling plastic, uh, recycling from plastic waste into creativity in created educational products. This is also one of the new innovative activity that uh, the Alola Economic Empowerment Program just published. And um, we also provide, continue to provide training to our beneficiaries and target group, which is the trainings are handicraft, provide training on handicraft size, which is traditional textile and product diversification training. Uh, another training is about business education and financial literacy training, as well as gender-based violence and leadership training that we integrated through our economic uh, uh, empowerment program with the advocacy program that under Alola Foundation. Um, um, so the other uh, priorities as uh, accept, accept from the training is access to market opportunities, which is we usually always uh, continue to provide the opportunity from our beneficiaries, our target groups for the market. Uh, Uh, we will also establish a new weavers networking at out in municipalities. Currently, we have four municipalities established, and we will continue with the rest of the uh, municipalities to establish the same group. Next slide, please. Well, talking about the role of CSO and MFI here in Timor Leste in addressing women's barriers that was identified at the municipality level. So we, as the CSO, our role are to hold a series of meetings to advertise more traffic service to our beneficiaries. And uh, we, from our Alola Foundation, our staff will provide training of trainers or COT on business and financial education to local facilitators that will be focused on two uh, municipalities, Nermera and Likisa. And we will also, through our advocacy program, will provide gender-based violence and leadership training for around 200 um, MFI clients, which is more classic clients. Um, this has been as a, one in program integration uh, internally between advocacy and economic empowerment program at Alola, as I mentioned. And what are the MFI's roles? So MFI's role uh, are include conduct market assessment of client investigation and to provide loan discipline and special loans training to hundreds of Alola Foundation beneficiaries, 
as well as to train business and financial education to more trusted MFI clients through the local facilitator. Next slide, please. It's in local linkage and partnership to advance women empowerment goals. The importance are through the waste-based project in Timor Leste that currently we have. There are opportunities to link Alola Foundation beneficiaries to microfinance at Morris Rustic, which is access to loans. And also the, one of the other importance is to link Morris Rustic borrowers to business skill training on key topics to increase their ability to use loans effectively to start and grow marketable business. And the next one is to link more classic clients to gender-based violence prevention and response services at Alola Foundation through our advocacy program. And one of the important uh, links and partnership as well is that we, through this program or project, we will send out SMS messages and distribute flyers to around 2,000 PSO beneficiaries and MFI clients for additional information to support them in their business. Next slide, please. So what do we looking forward from this project? Are? Alola Foundation beneficiaries, beneficiaries will have access to loans from more plastic MFI. And more strategic clients have better knowledge on business and financial literacy to flourish their business. And we also believe that from this project, more strategic clients have better knowledge on gender issues and economic decision making in household level, while increase the number of new clients have access to more strategic products. So uh, what are the CSO and MFI, uh, MFI's partner with German Foundation? Who are they? So Grammen Foundation so far has been identified three CSO in Timor Leste, which is Alola Foundation, Bafuturu, and IMTL, uh, and, and, and two MFIs, uh, which is Morris Rastic and Kaibao, as key partners to implement wage-based projects in Timor Leste. And Grammen Foundation has provided capacity building on gender and power dynamics for CSOs and MFI staff to be more sensitive to gender as a value add. That's all for my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Madam Aku, for sharing a lot of information work, especially on women economy empowerment, on women economy program to Henry Crab, livelihood. Also share some highlight to the program for the empowerment program for this 2021 and some overview about linkage working between CESO and MFI. Thank you, Manamaku. Our next speaker is from our CESO partner, Mana Juliana Marsal, Executive Director from Bafuturu. We'll share also from their product and service, also experience the current needs and gaps of women groups they serve. She will also share for us today the experience about implementation of wage pass from Gram Foundation to Bafuturu as CESO partner. Mana Juliana, when you're ready. So thank you very much for this opportunity. It is my great honor to participate in this uh, opportunity because Bafuturu can have a chance to share what Bafuturu have done so far in the area of uh, empowering women and girls uh, program. My name, once again, my name is uh, Juliana Marsal and I'm the executive director for Bafuturu. Before I go deeply about uh, the program, I would like to share about Bafuturu's uh, overview. Bafuturu is a national organization established in 2004. Since we established, we have reached uh, more than 40,000 uh, directly, our beneficiaries, children, young people, women, parents, teachers, community leaders, and other key community actors. Bafuturu is known as a prevention organization. 
we specialize in peace building area, gender empowerment, child protection, education, teaching approaches, and conflict transformation. What is ba Bafuturus vision and mission? Bafuturus vision and mission is to build a peaceful, positive, and productive Timor-Leste by using the innovative approach to protect children, reduce violence, empowering women, and inspire young learners. How Bafuturus current project contribute to empowering women project? Currently, we have two types of project that focus on empowering women project. First, we have economic empowerment project and a youth change maker project. The second, we also have other type of, type of project, peace building project, protection, education, parenting project, etc., that help also economic development even less directly, but are still essential to support economic development. Bafuturus project that focus on the economic empowerment project. In this year, uh, we have a main donor called Miserior, started in 2000, uh, 2017 up to now, funded our economic empowering women project called Women Driving Peace and Economic Development. In this specific project, uh, we try to respond the barriers that uh, explained by Grameen Foundation because the, these barriers are exist in Timor Leste. The objective of this specific project that Bafuturu have is increase women's ability to participate in economic activity by creating a support environment in which women feel safe and encouraged by providing business skills training and promoting exist, existing resource for entrepreneurship within the cooperative groups. The second objective is also to increase participant access to engagement with the existing community networks. So in this, it's not focused on the uh, uh, increase the access to the loans, but also provide the the encourage women to access to the uh, network for the victims, for those who experience domestic violence or gender-based gender violence, they can ac ac access the referral pathways. Other objective is to incre increase participants' decision-making, conflict prevention and mitigation skills through training to engage effectively in conflict prevention, as well as household and community level decision-making. The last objective is cross-cutting objective. In this cross-cutting objective, we are not only working closely with the women and the women's group as the direct beneficiaries of this project, but we also strengthen the local organization in the base. Here, uh, one local organization based in Bobonaru, Organiza Sound Haburas Morris, to support the, their organization on how they can better provide the support to the women's group that they already work with. The activities that we incorporated in this uh, specific project, we have eight different activities. Normally, we start with the outreach activities in these activities to build a relationship with our project, our team, in the area that we implement the activities. And the second one, we use also the community theater representation. The community theater presentation here, uh, performance here, we use as uh, 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 tools that to engage with the larger beneficiaries to share messages on the importance of the economic empowering women program. We also provide two types of different training, economic empowering women training and also conflict management training. In these two types uh, training, we aim to provide the knowledge on the business skills to the women's groups, as well as enhance their ability on how to mitigate a conflict to prevent conflict, conflict not escalate in their family or in their, uh, in their groups. After the training, we also provide one-on-one -on -one support to our beneficiaries who part of the, of the program. 
We also have the business competition. The business competition is offered for the general women who establish their business and the women's group that already uh, committed into the program. The, uh, the incentive that we give in this uh, award that we give in the competition, it's not uh, a monetary, but we identified the needs of the group that uh, the equipment that they need to sustainable the, their group, we provide this as award for the for those who win in the business competition. We also conduct the local and the national women conference the, with aims that women can have a chance to share, gather women together to share their knowledge, their experience, so they can support each other, how to start their business, how to resolve the conflict, how to mitigate the conflict that they face. They can sharing their uh, knowledge to each other. We also support the women group who take part in the program to link to, to access to the market. For those women or group that produce the, the products such as peanut butter uh, or um, uh, handicraft, they can uh, access to the, to the market. Bafuturu introduced the store that in Delhi to store their products in the shop that we have identified. What is the importance of creating local linkages and partnership to advance women empowerment goals? In here, we see to facilitate women can easily access to microfinance at Kaibauk or Morris Rasik to get to start their businesses. We also link the Morris Rasik or borrowers, uh, Morris, Morris Rasik borrowers to business skill training and different key topics, increase their ability to use loans effectively to start and grow market business, link Kaibao clients to gender-based violence prevention and response service that are available in Timor-Leste, enhance bo both parties, women, women's group, and Maurice Rasik about women equality and women's empowerment and decision-making, these local linkages also can have like to building self uh, confidence. The value of engagement between Bafuturu and Gramin Foundation. Through this opportunity, we can see receive the exchange knowledge in the area of economic empowerment uh, program. Through this opportunity also, we can learn more about the best practices for the Women Economic Empowerment uh, Program. Through this partnership with the Gramin Foundation also, Bafuturu is able to easily link Bafuturu's beneficiaries, the women's group, to access to the loan agencies in Timor-Leste. Now we have established a collaboration with Morris Rasik in Atauru Island. Through this partnership also, we can have knowledge sharing on the impact of the gender-based violence to the women economic empowerment, how to mitigate in the implementation or in the intervention. Uh, I also would like to present some documentation that we gather from this project. As you can see in these uh, pictures, there is a lot of people. These pictures is, was taken uh, in 2018 before COVID hit, where Bafuturu Dynamic Theater team do, did the performances in the marketplace to share the messages about the importance of the economic empowerment uh, information, especially knowing the assets that they can identify in every household to use to start their businesses. The second slide is different uh, activities uh, that we implement in this uh, specific project that you can see here uh, from the women conference, women sitting together to share their knowledge, one-on-one -on -one support from our facilitator to the beneficiaries and uh, other activities that we incorporate in this project. Lastly, I would like also to share with you about the quote that we get from uh, our participants. Uh, 
one of the participants, female, 21 years old from Maliana, she said that the training is very useful uh, for her. Based, and she said that based on the previous experience, I used to hit my children and I didn't know about their rights. But after this training, I learned how to be patient and be calm when dealing with my children. This is the quotes that we take from the participants that uh, uh, participated in Bafuturu's uh, project. Thank you. Thank you, Mana Juliana, for sharing Bafuturu works and some project on women, women driving peace and economic development, and increasing women ability, women participation, on loan, women decision maker, and some experience from women beneficiary. Thank you so much, Mana Juliana, for this. Uh, before we go to next speaker, I would like to remind that everyone can now do, do the um, questions so we can have after this last speaker from um, Hebao. Thank you. Last but not least, our MFI partner, Mount Edu Da Costa, Deputy Chief Executive Director from Kaibao Institution, will also highlight the various strategy of financial providers to respond to the need of TSO partners to their beneficiaries. Mount Edu, when you're ready. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mount Rio. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well, Mom. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, because I have experienced um, uh, the issue with the um, network, so that in my presentations, uh, if uh, somehow you cannot hear me, please um, send me a message so I can probably repeat or uh, uh, trying to fix. Uh, first of all, um, uh, good morning and good evening to everyone. Um, I would like to quickly acknowledge um, uh, U.S. Embassy representative in Timor-Leste who participate, uh, Grameen Foundation team, um, uh, my colleagues um, panelists from Bafuturu and uh, Alola Foundations, Mana Maria and Mana Juliana, and um, everyone. Um, it is uh, an honor um, that um, uh, Kaibao is allowed to be part of this uh, webinar uh, and share what uh, Kaibao does in the uh, microfinance area. Uh, Kaibao, um, probably um, uh, you have heard about Kaibao, um, but um, uh, Kaibao uh, is one of the um, ODTI uh, licensed by uh, Central Bank in 2016. Uh, prior to that, uh, uh, Kaibao uh, operate as an NGO called um, Tubarai Meeting since 2001. Uh, our main uh, work or our missions is to, to provide um, uh, microfinance uh, uh, services to uh, poor entrepreneurs uh, in the um, you know rural areas and uh, help uh, help them to develop uh, especially empower uh, women uh, currently uh, Kaipau um, operate in all the municipals including uh, um, uh, Oikosi um, we have over 320 staff um, serving our client in 22 branches uh, across the country. And as of now, we have uh, about 14,000 uh, clients, uh, which 60% um, of them are uh, women uh, clients. We offer mainly uh, lending uh, product um, and also saving product. With uh, lending product, um, we have about um, 11 different products 
this is uh, ranging from um, you know consumptions um, lending to business lending majority are uh, business lending uh, from agriculture related activities uh, trading and other um, uh, uh, manufacturing activities the uh, lending product is the um, service that we are very active uh, but uh, uh, deposit or saving product uh, we are not very active uh, that is mainly because of uh, the um, uh, ODTI uh, threshold for deposit. In, in terms of uh, priorities uh, for this year, um, uh, no, before I move to priorities, uh, can can go to next. Thank you. Um, I'm going to cover our operating model. Uh, microfinance uh, is is uh, is introduced by Grameen Bank, and uh, there is a known model implement uh, worldwide. And Kaibauti is also initially adopting the same model. Um, but later in 2010, uh, Kaibauti decided to change. Or at that time, still uh, Tubarai, Tubarai meeting decide to change the model uh, this is based on the um, demand or request from our client uh, those changes uh, include um, the group lending uh, change to uh, personal lending um, weekly payment to monthly payment uh, and also uh, hundred percent uh, women a client in the past uh, to now we have we are open to both uh, male and um, uh, female clients uh, the intentions of uh, of um, uh, doing this is because we believe that um, the importance uh, of microfinance is to be able to allow household to access financial services this is both female and uh, male, um, but there is a choice uh, for household member to decide who will um, uh, access to the services and who will manage the business. The next slide uh, is on uh, uh, 2021 priority. Uh, among the uh, other um, priorities that we have there are um, three priorities that we think is relevant for us to share the first one is to manage uh, the COVID-19 pandemic impact to uh, our business as well as um, our client the second priority is uh, to pay attention in growing the uh, agriculture uh, related lending uh, and the third one is um, you know, developing a platform that allow for um, for uh, uh, you know alternative uh, channel of financial services. Those uh, three priorities uh, is uh, aiming to help our clients, especially our women clients, who the previous um, panelists already mentioned that they have a lot of uh, limitations. They have a lot of challenges. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, panelists, some of the panelists also agree that um, uh, our women um, uh, entrepreneurs are also involved in agriculture sector, uh, most of them. So this priority is um, uh, aimed to assist them uh, now and in the future so that they can develop uh, and grow their business. Uh, next uh, slide. Um, one of the uh, important uh, uh, elements that we are promoting to be able to encourage uh, our, um, our clients, especially um, women clients, is to encourage them to uh, develop themselves through 
different uh, means. Uh, currently, we are working with uh, a partner who is uh, providing financial literacy training, um, as well as other uh, technical training. Uh, but in the future, uh, we want to also engage with uh, other partners, uh, uh, including uh, Alola and Bafutur, uh, that can provide a specific uh, technical uh, training, training in the area of agriculture on how to farm or uh, which um, a better variety of uh, crop that can be um, uh, plant or promote. Um, so uh, by having uh, the initiative uh, provided by Grameen Foundations, this will help uh, uh, us to be able to link um, our clients to uh, CSOs, but more, but more importantly is uh, in the future to link our client to the, the suppliers um, uh, and also the buyers who is able to um, assist the clients through pro uh, supplying the goods and services they need as well as to purchase um, uh, goods and services that our client uh, produce. Um, so this is um, what uh, Kaibauk uh, does. Um, I would like to open uh, the floor for any uh, reactions, uh, comments, or um, uh, questions. Um, to close my presentations, um, I would like to mention here is that um, uh, Kaibauk is um, committed uh, to promote um, uh, micro enterprises to grow, uh, especially female entrepreneurs. Uh, but this requires um, uh, you know, support from you know, stakeholders, from um, the team uh, who are um, involved in, in these areas. Uh, this will allow uh, the support to be able to uh, help strengthen the, the development of uh, women entrepreneurs. Uh, lastly, thank you very much uh, for the attention and I'm um, uh, happy to take any comment or question. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mauricio, for sharing Kaiba uh, Constitution words on uh, women. Uh, thank you for all the speaker. We will now move to the question and answer section. But before that, I would like to uh, announce that we will uh, share the files on the beaver to the assessment report and short overview of the wage project. Anna Kim. Anna Kim. Uh, yes, I'm sharing it now, Rio. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mana. While we're waiting for Mana Kim for share this file to you all, let us have if there are any questions to raise up. Otherwise, I will start with one uh, question here from Lucas Sarmento. Is it Lucas Sarmento here? Uh, Mount Lucas Sarmento? Atu Sulet Punaba, Mount Lucas Ne Pugutane, referred by Cheso Alola Foundation, Fundasam Alolaka, Ba Futuruga, Ba Kaibal. What was the question, Ryu? The question was about uh, what is the what 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 the project done by this agency and to how many groups of women and where the project is. Thank you. And is that for Alola Foundation to answer? Maybe it's for Alola Foundation. Let's 
Maun Lucas Sarmiento. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, so what the number of the groups so the, uh, so far Alola has uh, support and you know, the project is done? So since 2010, Alola has uh, provided support to 56 uh, women's groups. So, more or less, uh, uh, with the project of uh, we support it, it was uh, micro uh, microfinance. Uh, uh, it it could be linked to the microfinance. Uh, we we can, we say uh, micro lending uh, cooperative. So we are. Uh, uh, different uh, project to integrate uh, microfinance uh, and as well as uh, agriculture. And we have an other project as well, uh, we call Handicraft. So the one we presented today is uh, uh, microfinance, uh, but this microfinance is called uh, village. Uh, micro lending so what we provide to uh, women uh, group in the village is provide training for business and financial education agriculture as well as we also provide them uh, gender-based violence training this activity we integrate with uh, our uh, advocacy program. So, hello, Monday. Uh, I think we lost them in the audio. Maybe we can move to the next question, Ryu. Yes. Okay. The next question from uh, Mr. Manuel Barros. Uh, he just mentioned about if it's uh, Raman uh, to to share them the result that Raman already have. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so for the results of the... Um, I mean, the, speak, the, 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 the presentation, all the presentation today. Uh, for the, um, what we presented today, you can see the file on the briefer. So it's a short version of the full report. Um, we sent it in English and also in Tatum um, for those that are based in Timor-Leste. And then we will be releasing the full report um, in the next few days for everyone's reference. Okay, uh, Manakim, uh, I hope that uh, Mao Emanuel is clear. We, we already shared to you the briefer uh, uh, just nearly before the question and answer of the section. And also, we, we, we also uh, we moved to another question. It's to Kaibao. Mount Edio, the Kaibok still maintain the group lending or did you transform all client to personal or individual? Hello. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Sure, sure. Um, I, I saw there are um, three questions related to Kaibao. So um, if um uh, Rio allow, I can give, mm -hmm. um, I can respond to those uh, three at one time. Sure, yes, go ahead. So yes, um, the, there was a question from uh, Luz Coronado asking whether uh, we still keep the group uh, uh, loan or uh, no longer. The answer is uh, 
since 2010, we no longer use uh, group loan method. We now are lending to individual. Uh, this is because um, uh, in the past, uh, after nine years of uh, two bar meeting operations, there were a lot of uh, concern, questions, suggestions um, that there is a challenges uh, when uh, we use uh, group loans. Uh, one of them is one member um, have difficulties; the rest of the group member uh, cannot uh, cannot um, uh, develop, cannot uh, keep uh, moving because uh, there is a, a discipline method uh, behind that. Uh, the, the other uh, question coming from uh, uh, Novanto, Agus. Um, due to, due to um, uh, ODTI um, uh, loans, uh, ODTI cannot um, keep uh, client funds in saving uh, more than a million dollars. So the question is, uh, if that's the case, then uh, how do the how do we manage uh, our liquidity? Uh, where do we get funds to finance our lending program? So the the answer is that uh, we engage with um, uh, financial institutions and funding agency um, overseas to finance our lending. So we are basically going to an uh, international uh, money market. Uh, to um, uh, to borrow and finance our lending. The other questions is from Mana Elisa. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the challenges faced by women and the girls uh, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic? For uh, Kaipauk, um, because this is a business activities, um, we only understand from that perspective um anything uh, beyond that is not in our area of expertise but from the perspective of uh, client business um uh, since um 2020 when uh, pandemic start to uh, affect uh, timor leste community we have seen that a uh, lot of challenges uh, from our client uh, including our uh, female uh, clients where their um, business uh, income uh, drop. Uh, some of them even um, lose their business because uh, the business that they normally do is no longer the need uh, of the market. And uh, some of them um, are struggling for a, a short period and be able to come back um, and um, you know, uh, reorganize their business. So one of the things that we do as part of um, regulator requests, central bank requests, is to assist those that have difficulties during pandemic, uh, especially during the lockdown, um, in, to, in uh, between the between the month of uh, April to June last year, uh, by uh, understanding their business, understand the challenges, and uh, supporting them uh, case by cases. And we have seen that. Um, a uh, significant number of uh, our female clients experience this and uh, we support through our case-by-case um, uh, -case, uh, uh, support activities. Uh, I hope I answer uh, those questions, uh, so I give it back to Mount Rio. Thank you. Thank you, Mount Rio, for the answers. And, um... We'll have also um, the question from actually, uh, maybe we're trying to connect to Bafuturu about Mana Christina Bulon about how how do you ensure that support the project of home and economic empowerment will be sustained as system of project will be terminated? Uh, can you please repeat that for you? Yeah, can you please repeat for Manalisa? 
maybe from Man for Manalika to ask her about uh, from Mana Christina side. Yes, she asked about uh, how do you ensure that supported project for women economic empowerment will be sustained when a system or project will be good, will terminate it. Okay, good. I also saw some question here through chat box and also through the Q&I. Uh, uh, just to answer Josia Brian uh, question about do you also engage or include men? Yes, in our project, uh, when we implement uh, with the women's group, in the women's group, there a group that uh, have when, uh, men and women as well. But our target it for the project, this project is specifically uh, to build the capacity building for the women, women specifically about how they can understand their asset and also building, building their confidence to, to start their businesses. For the men, we engage in separate ways to provide the training information. We also provide the conflict resolution that general uh, information that include the men as well in the in that training. We also provide the conflict uh, the the child right and positive discipline so that they understand about the right of the of the children and they know how to discipline their their child in the family so that uh, this is like a packet that we offer uh, in this training so to answer your question yes we do also engage with the men as well in 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 this project that i've mentioned the area that we intervene for this uh, specific project the first three years we uh, implement in Bobonaru and Atauru Island. Now for the next three years, starting 2021 to 2024, we will focus implement this specific project in Kovalima and also Ermera. So the ans uh, to answer the question about uh, to guarantee, to ensure the sustainability, is uh, we provide the space for women uh, to try uh, implement their business, introduce the, the system that already in place, uh, especially support them to show them the way they can uh, access to, to the market so that they can store the product that they have. So that this once they know the place, then this is can continue uh, building the relationship with the store to make sure that their product are uh, in a good quality so that the store can receive their product. So yeah. this is some uh, information that we enhance through our activity on one-on-one -on -one support to the women who participate in our program to ensure that uh, after this program, they, uh, the sustainability of these uh, activities can go on. Thank you for uh, for this, and hope this is answer your question. Thank you, uh, Manalika, for your answer. Uh, we have a question from Manal. Palmira Pires, hopefully uh, to Kaibal. The question is, and um, what what is the person interest that is charged for the launch? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Maria. Um, uh, there is also a question from um, Emmanuel Barros on um, how to manage the. COVID impact to um, uh, clients. Um, so I'll start with uh, uh, the interest rate. So um, for Kaibauk uh, interest rate, uh, we have one uh, um, uh, one flat um, uh, interest rate, uh, which is uh, 1.5 uh, per month, 1.5%, uh, 1. sorry. Uh, per month or about 18 uh, percent per month but this is a flat rate so we are we are in the process of um, of reviewing it and implementing a new uh, method which we call the um, uh, declining method on the question of how do we manage um, 
um, uh, COVID pandemic impact to our uh, uh, client activities. Um, from the perspective of um, of uh, uh, loan uh, uh, recovery and disbursements to our new clients, uh, we still uh, operating and even um, in the in the municipals that um, uh, tighten lockdown is implemented or um, circa ban. Uh, Circa Sanitary is implemented. We are still operating to be able to um, uh, assist our client. Um, uh, there will be a challenges that they face, and they, those challenges um, is uh, assist uh, case by cases. So our uh, field officers are um, uh, uh, contacted, uh, contacting our clients um, regularly to understand um, their situations. Um, to be able to see um, uh, if there is any anything that um, uh, you know they can assist. This is including um, the process on the repayment of their loan. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mario. Okay, Mawede, thank you so much for the answer. Hopefully, uh, it, it's a good answer to Manapogia Pires. Um, actually, we are really happy to, to have a lot of questions, uh, but since we couldn't have uh, through all of them because we are running out of the time, so we will promise, uh, we promise to send all the answer to each uh, the emails so we, we can actually answer that from the emails that we already have. Um, now we are going to the closing remarks with uh, Mutoni Kam Kamuyo Uzwala, it's a wage, wage director American Bar Association role of Law Initiative, Abarol. To Mutoni, when you're ready. Thank you. And thank you for your wonderful presentations. I really enjoyed them. I just wanted to give a, a brief thanks to distinguished members of the US Department of State, Secretary's Office of Global Wo uh, Women's Issues, US Embassy Dili, <clears throat> representatives of civil society and local business uh, community, Grameen Foundation and other Roli colleagues. Thank you for participating in this knowledge sharing event today. Um, ABA Roley is very proud to lead the Wage Consortium um, and to support the Wage Best Initiative in Timor-Leste. We very much value our partnership with the Grameen Foundation and our local Timorese partners. As others here have noted today, women entrepreneurs in Timor-Leste are identified as engines of economic growth. And in the wake of COVID-19, they need to be supported more than ever. We invite you to use our assessment report as a resource to support entrep women entrepreneurs in Timor-Leste and elsewhere to improve an enabling environment so that they can fully participate in economic activity. As previously mentioned, um, we will send to everybody via email the full assessment report once it is published on the WAGE website. And once again, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Stay safe and be well. Thank you.